Hello, everybody. Mike Welch coming to you from just above the paddock here at Del Mar, where about five, six hours from now, they will draw the post position for this year's Breeders' Cup. I'm here with the Daily Racing Forum. Breeders' Cup, Clocker Report, uh, brought to you by Spendthrift Farm, the home of champion sire Into Mischief, who will be represented in this year's uh, Breeders' Cup Classic by Newgate and Pyrenees. A relatively and somewhat surprisingly quiet morning here at, at uh, Del Mar, uh, considering that the main events uh, begin here on uh, just four days away. Uh, not a lot of activity to report. Part of the reason for that, uh, so many of the horses are coming off their final Breeders' Cup workouts, whether here or in other venues around the country just a couple of days ago. So a lot of the horses are still on their walk routines. We'll probably get back to the track tomorrow. But all the participants are here on the grounds. The Europeans not yet out of quarantine. We'll get our first look at them tomorrow. We'll talk about that a little bit later. There were three Breeders' Cup workers on the tab this morning, all maintenance work, two on the main track and one on the turf course. Uh, trainer Steve S. Buston, as we mentioned yesterday, uh, blew out three of his five uh, Breeders' Cup hopefuls yesterday. He completed the job early this morning with Cogburn and Gun Pilot. And Cogburn, he, he, his, his breeze came literally within uh, 30 or 40 seconds after the track opened. He warmed up in the chute. As soon as they opened the track, off he went. Uh, he blew out an easy three-eighths of a mile. And he was followed a half uh, hour later by Gun Pilot. Cogburn, obviously, uh, going to be the favorite uh, for the turf sprint. Gun Pilot, one of the contenders in the sprint. Gun Pilot went a, ha a three eighths and 36 and four, pulled up a little quickly. Cogburn uh, worked uh, a little slower three eighths, but they galloped out a little stronger. But again, both maintenance work, typical uh, for trainer Steve Aspen uh, in the days leading up to these kind of main events. The only turf uh, activity all day this morning uh, came uh, at 7.15, Santono Carnival, who will bring a perfect uh, two-for-two record into the juvenile turf, uh, breezed in similar fashion as we've seen from a lot of the Japanese horses here. They kind of open gallop into like a three-eighths of a mile breeze. Uh, he picked up the pace the further he went, uh, hit the top of the stretch uh, at an open gallop, a two-minute lick, and then came down the lane in 25 and two and continued out about another furlong and a half around the turn at a pretty sharp pace. He looked good, and like I said, uh, he's a perfect two for two going into the juvenile turf. Uh, we get first sightings today of some of the uh, major stables that uh, uh, did all their training outside of here in New York, Todd Pletcher, Chad Brown, and up the road at uh, Santa Anita, Bob Baffert. They all had horses on the track this morning. Among them, uh, for Todd Pletcher, his uh, classic hopefuls, Fierceness and Tap It Tries. Very routine gallops today. Fierceness was on the track simultaneously with Chad Brown's, uh, his classic hopeful, Sierra Leone. And they were joined out there right after the renovation break at about 8 o'clock by Forever Young. Forever Young uh, actually uh, had a fairly busy morning. He jogged and walked about a mile, turned around, galloped another mile and a quarter. And I'm told he is scheduled to work here in some sort of fashion on Tuesday. Uh, there was one incident among uh, the classic hopefuls this morning, Ushba Tesoro, uh, right before the end of the early session today. Uh, something caught his eye, something spooked him. He wheeled, he lost his rider. The rider was able to grab onto him so he did not get loose. In fact, at one point, Ushba Tesoro kind of got uh, tangled up in the reins and actually had his mouth on one of his uh, stirrup irons uh, fortunately, they uh, rectified the situation. The rider got back on and completed his morning activity, uh, none the worse for wear. So that was good, a, a little bit of excitement uh, earlier today. Uh, among the more uh, eye-catching uh, gallops this morning, and believe me, everything was routine. Nobody uh, did all that much today. Uh, East Avenue, who came by the wire a couple of times and uh, looks just as imposing when he, as he gallops as the uh, unblemished record he's going to bring into the Breeders' Cup, and he is going to vie for favoritism. I'm guessing he will maybe be the slight favorite in the juvenile with uh, Chad Brown's Chancer McPatrick. Um, other than that, like I said, everything was routine. Tomorrow, things will be a little bit busier. Sullivan Angel, who was the last horse on the track to train today for trainer Safi Joseph Jr., right before the track closed at 9.30. He's gonna blow, uh, she's gonna blow out tomorrow for the Philly and Mass Sprint quarter mile maybe three-eighths of a mile. She had her last major work back at Gulfstream uh, before I left. 
uh, last week on Monday. Uh, also uh, expected on the tab, like I said, Forever Young, and also T.O. St. Dennis, who I think I mentioned a couple of days ago, was supposed to work for the vet. Uh, he was beaten 60 lengths in his last start in Japan, so he has to get off what they call a poor performance list. But he did not work fast enough the other day. I don't think anybody told his connections that he had to make a certain time. And again, he went in that similar fashion as uh, a lot of these other Japanese horses. Uh, so the 5 ace time was like 108, 109. He's going to have to do a lot quicker tomorrow. But T.O. Dennis should be out there as well. Hopefully we'll get our first sighting tomorrow of Torpedo Anna, who arrived, uh, I think it was early this morning. And uh, like I said, uh, the Europeans uh, are supposed to be out of quarantine. I'm expecting to see them on the track. Hopefully uh, uh, are expecting most of them on the grass tomorrow or at least a fair amount of them. I doubt any of them will breeze tomorrow, but maybe Wednesday or Thursday, they will breeze right on top of their races. So looking forward to that as well. So again, all the major work is done, but still a lot to talk about, a lot to see here as we get closer and closer to Breeders' Cup 2024 and for the best coverage right here at drf.com.